she doesn't want what she had before. And the truth is, the kind of adults that tell you your youth are the best days of your life just didn't follow their dreams, no matter how successful they might seem. Happiness balancing on a knife edge, tipping over at the smallest tremor in the earth, sometimes stamping tantrum feet hard enough on the tectonic cracks to create an earthquake of their own making to curb the expansive fields of boredom, to entertain the few hours they can bear the strain of waking. But now you're building houses on that land, tearing down nature's vines and fruits, filling sea with sand, to build a city of hollow two-bed terraces, each the same to house your fear. And one day, it could be tomorrow, You'll pause building for a second to remember the open, empty, expansive ground that once surrounded you with fresh air. The kind of freedom that emanates past your bones through to your soul, the kind that makes you whole. And then you'll shut that door for the worry that more will not be worth the effort it takes to change. For worry that the fragile houses you created the city that weighs on your shoulders as you try to excuse its existence, with already cracked black mortar walls, will be too fragile to recover from a fall. But what if you crush those houses on your own? What if you tore up society's sticky tarmac roads? What if you ignored the signs and symbolic old gestures of a tired tradition and started creating culture again? Please realise that some people have everything and those people could still have nothing at all. When you go all the way through, don't ask for a borrowed chance. Blue is not the colour of opportunity. Make sure you spent a whole life living. Now, I can only speak for what I hope to be a quarter of my life so far, but I just don't want what generations had before. Hi, my name is Laura Dickinson. I hope you're having a great time at Ashfield Arts Fest. My next poem is called Brexit. If this is the way things are happening, then how do I learn to live with so much hate left behind by half a nation when I, the other half, had no inclination whatsoever to burn our bridges down. From denial turned into doubt, into clutching at straws that we might not come out, into it's happening. And collectively, our young hearts sank. Not just the young, but all of those who cast their vote because proportionally flawed, we had passed our decision into the hands of those who sought ignorance over us all. So, in the wake of this irreparable mistake caused by a misinformed generation, let us now build a future based on peace, unity and acceptance. So when the smoke clears in five to ten years let us be standing strong in independence the remains that kept our hearts open when the borders closed you are personally accountable for peace i'm a product of everyone i've ever loved some good some bad, some uncategorised as yet. But I do remember the first day we met. Imagine the sun-swept streets of my city. Crowds of people mourn in pity at your passing. But still, we rise from the ashes for a new day when you were born. Your beginning was so close to an ending, even the mind-bending emotion of that sentence moulds the setting for your start. You are such a work of art. But I am auntie now, as uncle graciously bows out. Frantically, I try to remember everything you say, or said. 
some pathway through this newfound responsibility I have unwittingly ended up in. You never met, but some things are just set out that way. I see your reflections in each other, in a way not even your mother does. Your dark hair, your love for just air, and your firm grip on this air. You have big things to come. You follow big things that have been done. And our accomplishments in life become the standing for yours, a platform to soar. And we have been left in such good stead already. Steady, rooted in love. I'm a product of everyone my heart has ever even brushed past. The very first person to the very, very last. And I already see. Little parts of me becoming little parts of you two, nephew. This poem is called Build and I wrote it in response to the social housing crisis. Right then, listen up. Important piece of information for you. We won't all live till we're 80. Some of us might, but I thought when 100,000 people died that we'd stop taking life for granted. I thought we'd start making better choices. I thought we'd start using our voices rather than curling up trying to deflect versions of the truth. I'm with you, but are you with me? We're surrounded by buildings sitting full of investment, yet cold bare feet to the streets. Apartment blocks rise from the rubble, gentrifying, working cracked palms on the concrete. It's easier to move around when you're alone, searching for a crack of light in a door jam, praying for the grace of another to open their home when everything you own is on you. It is estimated that 380,000 people in Britain are hidden homeless, living in B&Bs, in hostels and on sofas, warming beans on the radiator, tiptoeing shared corridors in hushed voices, a youth lost, trying to not disturb a neighbour. A friend once said, though you have a roof over your head, you are not living hidden and homeless, just existing. This is a call for social housing, social equality and a government step up, not brothers and sisters trapped in a money-making setup. We ask for more support for the less fortunate. We ask for a system that is less extortionate. We ask for better. This is a call to build. I've somehow lost my fluffy. You know, that cute little bit that you add on to the end. If you think so. Kind of. Thank you. I don't want to make you feel bad, so I fluff up my feathers round the edges to appear softer, to cushion the abrasion of my real thoughts. I don't like you. You don't like me, so let's live civilly but we don't need to talk. Man, I've been accommodating other people's egos for so long, I started to believe that I was the one that was wrong. Let me dumb myself down for you. Let me trivialize my hormones. Let me lift the tones of my voice for your comfort. Man, I don't wanna make you feel intimidated. I'm cute, don't worry, I'm cute. Remember that. When we're staring down the barrel of each other's guns, when my skin is hard as stone, relenting shine reverberating, what is mine is yours. As I move and I breathe, this fluffiness falls away from me, like sand from the shoe of Malala Yousafzai, leaving only bedrock. Strong and sturdy like the rib I was carved from, bubble wrap gone, pop. 
Feathers float down around like confetti. Today, women, let's lose our fluffy. Thank you all for watching. Please check out my Instagram at the end. I've got one more poem for you called For All That We Have Come From and it's about my hometown of Nottingham and the mentality of living in the Midlands. This one is not afraid to stand. Union rallied behind me or alone, I will not be made afraid to speak or stand on my own. The silent ones, let our world limp on. But if you don't set the broken bones straight early, they will still grow strong enough to walk on, but the painful problem remains. The unsettling thought of a twisted femur, but you were complicit to this world when you crushed the clouds in Antifa Dreamer. But in the same thought, strong enough to let your dreams walk away from their own monotony. They're still close enough to catch up if you wanted but I don't think you ever will. Your original Doc Martin boots now set in the concrete that you laid. But I will be disgraced before I set fire to what I believe. I hope you grow a backbone in your sleep. I hope you see the harm in not harming anyone because this is a call to arms. And arms in the old sense meant not just filling your empty metal magazines with words, but providing the much needed arms housing for our homeless. Our veterans. Our refugees, our fellow humans. And for all of that, image and ego doesn't matter. You could paint my name red in the streets like they tried with Corbyn, but I would rather fall into disrepute. I would rather fall from grace in your eyes. I would rather fall and be disgraced than mask my face with lies for comfort. For all that we have come from, the smog-filled sky over boots, rally and imperial tobacco will always call home. Even though the smog has cleared and the rubble has been cleared, and our city's conscience has been cleared of tobacco, my roots cannot be uprooted. I, not may, not maybe, not maybe I'll make it through this life unscathed in pursuit of all I know to be true, I will be disgraced.